Hello my soccer universe for this week's Iberian Roundup. We have two rounds of La Liga to recap and I'm doing my best to try to remember everything that happened from Monday through Thursday. Um, so yeah, I will also add in some Portugal because there have, has also been an amazing development happening there. And yeah, I already said in Spain, I uh, have been quite some interesting things happening as well. Uh, on the top of the table as well as on the bottom of the table um, and some great goals scored in, in between so it was quite the right um, again I actually didn't see all that much I saw mostly highlights because uh, yeah other things are happening and I have to say that most of the time La Liga was not all the great watch since the coming back so far but I really hope that this will go the other way. Okay, we'll start out Monday, Villarreal Sevilla. Uh, this was 22nd of June, so a long time ago. Sevilla again managing a draw. It's kind of every, uh, the round starts, Sevilla is the first game and Sevilla plays out a draw. They won the first game and since then they've only done draws, which uh, you can see as either frustrating or maybe they're just hanging barely on because everyone that's also vying for Champions League spots, a bar Atletico Madrid, are actually doing worse. So in that sense, yeah. And Villarreal uh, turns out to be a uh, contender and they took twice the lead in that game but Sevilla could always equalize. Leganes Granada um, a draw which uh, doesn't really help either of them with their ambitions. Atletico Madrid again another win and now uh, Atletico is really churning out um, how, how to say nasty, nasty wins it was an own goal uh, not much happening but again Atletico grinds out the draw and Atletico actually really pulling themselves in position. Real Valladolid and Getafe uh, play out a 1-1 one -one draw. Then in the evening we had Barcelona taking on Bilbao and this was Barcelona uh, coming off the rather disappointing draw against uh, Sevilla before. Um, at home, uh, away from home and now they play uh, they played uh, Bilbao uh, where they actually now needed to get something and actually they did play well but it was not all that uh, convincing but in the end it's Rakitic um, the young is in, injured so Rak Rakitic a man that has been more or less uh, forced out steps up and scores the decisive goal um, again and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, at the second round Barcelona not convincing but at least this time they get the win Osasuna gets a win at um, Alaves um, Celta Vigo cut on a roll and uh, really got with that more or less got themselves out of trouble at Real Sociedad who are the exact opposite they just cannot get a result they gave up a penalty uh, through Iago Aspas uh, and that was that. Uh, it was overall a rather, um, you know, Real Sociedad is still playing nice, but it's just not clicking. Real Madrid, everyone agrees the win that Real Madrid got over Mallorca was well deserved, but the 1-0 through Vinicius Jr. Uh, in the build-up, uh, there was a foul of Carvajal that should have been called back. Uh, and then Sergio Ramos with a wonderful free kick and as I said, uh, big goals are, uh, great goals are hallmark of this round. Wonderful free free kick makes it then 2-0 two, two to give Real Madrid again uh, the lead. Abar beats Valencia, that was a, a big result. And uh, Betis, who just fired the coach last week, get also a win over Espanyol, who now fired Al Bilardo. <sighs> I found this a stupid move. Uh, in many many ways but Espanyol uh, I thought there was some hope and then uh, within a week all hope was more or less gone so if we look at the table after this round so this was the midweek round Real Madrid stays top um, had 46% chance of winning a championship and then Atletico Madrid is really uh, pushing uh, high high up solidifying the Champions League spot whereas Sevilla kind of dangling in uh, still hang, hang on there because neither Getafe nor Real Sociedad are uh, collecting many points it's just Villarreal actually might get in there but with having played a draw against Villarreal you still keep your five point cushion Valencia um, dropping 
Granada al Bilbao uh, flip-flopping, you will see that. And now if we look, especially at the relegation battle, there was already a four-point gap between Eibar and Mallorca. Uh, Vigo also getting out as uh, do Valladolid and Alaves. So uh, kind of this was already a pre-deciding round. Then over the weekend, again, Sevilla plays out the draw at the beginning of the week and this time this was Valladolid took the lead and Sevilla very very late equalized they maybe could have found a goal there was a goal ruled out for offside by VAR um, they get in the end the penalty to go through uh, Bilbao has um, not much trouble with beating Mallorca 3-1 although it took a little bit um, more uh, effort than one will have thought and then I think the game of the weekend probably was Celta Vigo against uh, Barcelona. I was actually looking forward to it, saw the second half um, because Celta Vigo was in great form and I wanted to see what Barcelona is doing and um, from the first half on I think Barcelona was very much in control of that game. Um, the, they even scored through Suarez when everyone thought that Messi is going to put in a free kick uh, directly a goal. No, he puts it on the head of Suarez who can add it in. I think the one thing Barcelona has to uh, be aggrieved a little bit is that they didn't score more goals. Although, you know, it was not all that super performance, but it, it was a salt a salt -sal performance where you, it, it was clear who are the better team. But that absolutely changed in the 50th minute. Where still Barcelona looked very much assured, and then uh, Iago Aspas plays a through ball to uh, Yokuslu, who puts it, who then suddenly is a two on one with only Piquet in the mid middle, who puts it to Smolov, who uh, puts it into the net. It's 1 1. And you could already see Barcelona a little bit um, second guessing themselves, but they still had their chances uh, to. Uh, still win this game and actually got another goal through Suarez. Uh, you know, it, the assist goes to Messi, but I think it was all Suarez's turn uh, to get that ball in because uh, that was not necessarily a position where you think a uh, goal has to be scored there. Um, and it seemed to be rather, you know, slowly, 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 Celta gets back into the game, especially in the last 15 minutes. You had the feeling, yeah, Barcelona will just hang on to that one. Uh, in the meanwhile, Suarez taking off uh, for Griezmann, and in the, 80, uh, in the 87th, a rather dubious free kick at the edge of the box is given. Thiago Aspas steps up and puts a nice swerve on the ball and it goes into the net to make it 2 2. Now, the big discussion every, uh, everyone after is that on the edge of that wall, there is Antonio Griezmann and when he's jumping he's kind of turning away and making the room for the ball to swerve through. Um, the question is would he, even, even if he have stood tall, uh, would he, the ball have gone, gone through? It didn't. It did not look good but I wouldn't necessarily blame um, uh, Griezmann too much for it. So it's 2-2 and Barcelona was ready to fall apart. Uh, and there was a huge chance uh, at the very end. I think it's Santimina, uh, who, if he hits it dif differently, this is in, in, in the net, he basically uh, shot it directly at Ter Stegen. This was a chance where Celta Vigo could have won it and really sent Barcelona a tailspin. In a tailspin, they went a little bit because afterwards, uh, you know, Luis Suarez's interview hinted at uh, there is not everything very well with Barcelona. And then there's also the stuff that, uh, you know, we have presidential elections, president and Messi don't like each other. Uh, is Xavi coming now as a coach? Uh, is a whole lot of trouble brewing in Barcelona. The whole season, you have the feeling Barcelona is just not looking right. Osasuna uh, gets, gives trouble to Le Leganes Atletico Madrid with another, uh, you know, labored win, but at least a win they get. Uh, that's that's the long and short, sh sh short of it. Uh, they had a 2 0 lead of Saul and Diego Costa scores again from a pen penalty very late. Um, uh, Alaves can pull one back. Levante Betis looks like a great game and for a large time it actually was not a bad game with both teams relatively even but there was only one team scoring that was Levante 
who scored four before Betis could put two back, had a huge chance to make uh, another, another one, but it uh, didn't happen. Uh, Villarreal beats a bloodless Valencia, but what goals did they score? Um, I, the first one or, or, or it was a great goal by Alcacer, but the second from uh, Moreno, the, it was it basically was a free kick that Valencia cleared and the goalkeeper punts it back out of the air forward. Santi Cazorla, uh out of the air a pass towards uh, Moreno who volleys it into in, in the internet. An unbelievable goal. This is something if you try try to do this again you will not manage that one. This is an unbelievable goal I have Literally not seen a goal like that, where there were three volleys to get it in. Uh, absolute amazing goal. Uh, probably goal of the season so far. Uh, and Villarreal gets a rather uh, uncontested win at Valencia. Not looking good and also there seems to be some unrest brewing in the locker room. Abar gets a very unexpected win 2-1 at Granada. Um, which sees them away from all the trouble and Real Madrid actually did not show up at Espanyol. Espanyol actually played quite well but then a moment of brilliance from Benzema uh, who a back heel through the legs and you can see this was exactly intended like that uh, puts it uh, cross goal the goal mouth and um, Casemiro I think it was could easily tap it in uh, was wonderful assist this was one of the best assists this season for sure and then uh getafe gets a typical getafe win over real sociedad uh real sociedad was playing most most time but then uh, they give up a penalty then they get back into the game uh it seems like either it's headed for a draw or or, or, or win then from a throw in uh the ball goes to uh mata who at the touchline more or less put it in the internet. It was just absolutely, uh, how to say, haphazard defending. So uh, credit Getafe gets the win, putting Real Sociedad in even more trouble. So after all this, let's let's look at the current table. Now Real Madrid is two points clear, so suddenly, and Barcelona is playing Atletico Madrid at home next although at home Barcelona at least has been getting their wins rather consistently Real Madrid has already qualified for the Champions League so uh, that's also with Barcelona probably coming rather rather soon so um, Real Madrid look looking good and I have to say from what the little I've seen of Real Madrid but I really have the feeling that uh, while they might not be super harmonious or whatever Real Madrid is getting the results and I don't see them dropping I mean uh, that many points and given that they had the head-to-head -head with Bar Barcelona it's not two points ahead it's more or less three points ahead uh, and it's to be a big combustion uh, of this hap of this happening I don't see Real Madrid dropping as many points for now Sevilla again barely hang out but now get tough for getting closer and also um, uh, Villarreal is still you think Sevilla might pull it off. Uh, and also there Valencia dropping out and putting actually Bilbao, who again leap for Granada now, uh, in the contention for this last uh, Europa League spot. But that is subject to the Copa del Rey, where, you know, Bilbao is playing against Real Sociedad, so those two have a double chance actually for the last spot. And now look at the bottom of, of the table. Uh, suddenly it is all clear. Abar looks super safe, Alaves looks super safe, and even Vigo. Uh, it may be that one of those, but I actually think that it looks pretty much that said. It's Mallorca, Leganes, and Espanol going down. Let's go to uh, Portugal. Uh, very amazing turn of event happened. Benfica taking on Santa Clara. Santa Clara getting actually um, a lead at halftime, but Benfica at home uh, looking very assured of pulling that one uh, back. Just let me pull, uh, pull it up here. Uh, getting the equalizer. Santa Clara actually gets another lead then it makes it make makes it 2-1 uh right in the 57th um then within two minutes carlos vinicius 
turned it all around for Benfica. It seems all set for, for, for Benfica, uh, who have more chances to waste. Then a penalty is given. It is 3-3 and in stoppage time Santa Clara gets the win. That allows Porto to scoop in in the derby and gets a very easy 4-0 win. All goals, I think, were scored in the second half. And you could clearly see Dave they were lifted through that one. Then uh, Thursday and Friday, we had uh, Braga 3-2 uh, over Gimares. That uh, was a big win. I actually didn't see much from that one. But, um, yeah, Braga had a 3 nah. It was uh, one, one on the Braga, then Guimaraes turns around 2-1, two, 2-2 one, two, two at the half, and then Braga gets the win. So uh, that surely was an interesting game, Belenenses uh, lose at home to Sporting, which uh, at that point then meant that um, Porto has a three-point lead over Benfica, Sporting and Braga solidifying their uh, Europa League spots, and then Family Cow, uh, Rio Ave, uh, probably for the last one. And then just yesterday, Benfica loses at Maritimo. Again, uh, both goals were scored very late. Benfica had control, but I have to say, uh, Bruno Lars is a dead man walking. And then Porto with another with another dirty win away from home. Uh, Paso de Ferreira definitely had a claim for at least one, if not two penalties, which were not given. But Porto hangs on, and with that, it's now six points, and Porto seems like it's a foregone conclusion that they will be champions. Benfica still has a very comfortable lead over Sporting, but Benfica does not look good at all. But uh, So it will be Porto, the new champions, and as I said, the other games still have to be played out. That was a lot to talk about, and I'm sure I've missed some details. I had to focus on the main stories here. In case you were, you were wondering what I was wearing, I was wearing my 2002... Center Real Madrid away jersey because it's Real Madrid who is doing all that well these days. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And let me know what you thought about all the happenings in Portugal and Spain. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.